Uh, so that's basically how I got interested in journalism because of a high school teacher who, uh, who uh, insisted that I was a good writer and a good and, and a good organizer. Of, uh, so, um, uh, but then I got sort of a, when I got to Columbia, I got kind of involved with social issues, social causes, and got involved in a variety of. I forgot about journalism for a while. Um, until about 10 years after I graduate, uh, after I, I was at Columbia. Uh, and um, by that time I was here in Philadelphia, um, working actually in a, in a, um, working in a printing plant out in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania as a pressman. I always tell people at the Daily News I'm one of the few reporters who actually ran presses myself and knows how to, how to run. Uh, presses and so I had worked for several years out in Valley Forge uh, as a pressman, uh, and um, but I was sort of like I decided I didn't want to be a professional and I wanted to be an organizer or the labor organizer and so um, but then in '78, this was in the '70s and in 1978 we had a mayor in this town who uh, David knows remembers well. Maybe some of you only have heard of him and Frank Rizzo, who was the mayor of Philadelphia back then, who was sort of like a neo-fascist uh, uh, and who had the whole city terrorized, especially the black and Latino community. And so Rizzo decided that he wanted to change the city charter because at that time the charter wouldn't allow you to be mayor longer than two terms. And he had, was finishing his second term, and he decided he wanted to stay as mayor for life, like like Richard Daly in Chicago and some of these others. So Rizzo tried to change the charter in 78 to stay on forever. And so I decided to quit my job out in Valley Forge, Pennsylvania and volunteer as, a, as an organizer of what was called the Stop Rizzo Coalition, which was to stop Rizzo from uh, getting a third term or from changing the charter. And so I got involved in a voter registration drive that really was the one that brought in many of the African-American and Latinos. There was a huge increase in registrations among African-Americans and Latinos. And, uh, and as a result, a lot of the political leadership of the Latino community came out of that, as well as of the black community. That's John Street was involved in that. Uh, Michael Nutter. I, I remember Michael Nutter when he was a kid organizing in the 10th Ward. <laughs> he was basically like a teenager <laughs> organizing in the 10th Ward. And, and now he's the mayor, you know, and John Street uh, had been an organizer in North Philadelphia with his brother Milton. And uh, all of us worked with them. All, we were all together in the Stop Rizzo recall uh, movement the, uh, in 1978. And, um, uh, and um, uh, Juan Ramos, Angel uh, Ortiz, uh, uh, Izzy Colon, all these people who are now sort of like Lydia Hernandez, all these people who are like veteran <laughs> leaders of the Latino community now, all came out of that movement in 78, 79. Uh, and um, uh, so that was sort of basically the awakening of the black and Latino community in Philadelphia. Uh, and um, and as, soon as, the, but the, as soon as the Rizzo campaign ended, however, I had to figure out because it was only like a two-month job, like from September to November, you know, for, for before the, the election, the referendum. So after it was over, I had to figure out what I was going to do for uh, My wife at the time was pushing me to get a job. So, uh, uh, so I actually uh, applied, because I had been kicked out of Columbia in 68 during the student strike there. Uh, and so I had finished my, my last uh, semester of work there. Um, and so I decided to go back to start taking some courses at Temple University here to sort of like finish my degree. Uh, and it, one of the teachers of the Temple University journalism course was a guy named, by the name of Fred Hamilton, who was an associate editor at the Philadelphia Daily News at the time. He was part-time, he would work teaching at Temple. And so after about two or three weeks working there, Hamilton calls me after class one day and he says, "Listen, man, your stuff is great. You could, you could work right now for the for the Philadelphia Daily News. You know, we got some job openings. Why don't you apply?" I said, "Well, yeah, but I'm trying to finish my degree, you know, and I've been out of school for ten years and blah blah blah." So anyway, so uh, but I, I ended up applying and I ended up uh, um, getting a um, uh, getting a job with the Philadelphia Daily News, but not as a reporter because 
In those days, Knight Ritter, which was the chain that then owned the paper, had all these batteries of tests that they would give you six hours of tests. It's like, it was worse than, you know, the SATs or anything like that. You had like six hours of tests you had to take. Just, those, by the way. Oh, yeah, the Knight Ritter. <laughs> Psychological tests, they did everything, right? So, uh, so I did well on their battery of tests, but I didn't have my degree. And so the, uh, the executive editor at the time um, called me into his office and he said, well, you know, you're doing, you did great on all your tests and uh, however, you don't have a degree and you don't have any newspaper experience and I have like hundreds of applications here from people with college degrees and, and newspaper experience. So we can't hire you as a reporter. However, we do have a a desk clerk job, that's the old copy boy, copy boy, desk clerk job, uh, and you type 70 words a minute, so you're definitely overqualified for the desk clerk, <laughs> desk clerk job, but if you want it, you got it. So I said, okay, I'll take the desk clerk job. So in November of 78, like two weeks after the Rizzo, that Rizzo got defeated, uh, I started working at the Philadelphia Daily News mm -hmm. as a desk clerk. Um, but one, the one thing that saved me was that at the time, the Daily News was bringing in its first computer system. In those days, everyone still typed on typewriters, right? And, and they, the ATEX system, they were bringing in the ATEX system. Uh, and so they put all these new computers in the newsroom, and all the reporters had to learn the new computers. Uh, the problem was that the old timers refused. So all the old reporters were refusing to use the new computer system. They insisted on typing their articles on typewriters and then giving them to the desk clerks, which was us, the copy boys, to type it into the system. Uh, so that became one of my big jobs, to take the copy of all of these reporters who were refusing to <laughs> bow to technology and type it into the system. But the great thing that that allowed me to do is that allowed me to see their raw copy before any editor had touched it. Mm -hmm. And as I, as I started inputting all this stuff into the system, I started realizing these, half these people didn't know how to write well, you know, <laughs> and they were making all kinds of mistakes. And so I went to my city editor at the time and I said, when I type all this stuff in the system, am I supposed to type in all the misspellings, all the bad grammar, everything? You know, she looked at me like, who are you? I said, well, you know, just say it. I'm looking at this copy. It's terrible. <laughs> so, so she said, no, no, if anything is obvious, fix it. All right, so, so I started fixing the copy. And um, I did that for about two months. And then in January of 79, I went to the editor-in-chief then, uh, Gil Spencer, and I said, Gil, no offense, but I write better than three quarters of the people you have on your staff. I know because I've seen their raw copy, right? Uh, not only that, I'm 10 years out of college, so I have more life experience than a lot of the young people that you have here. So I think I deserve a shot at being a reporter. So he had always been intrigued by my resume. Uh, and uh, so, uh, uh, and Gil was a guy who played the horses a lot, so he believed in hunches. So. Um, uh, so he said, okay, I'm going to give you a shot. And so he says, I have an intern reporter job open. And I can't guarantee you a full job, but if you take the intern reporter job, uh, we'll see how you do. So, so I, I started as a clerk in November of 78, and I started as an intern reporter in January of 79, three months later. Uh, and, you know, then I stayed on permanently and, you know, and did a variety of beats at the Philadelphia Daily News.